Hey, baby. How you doing? Huh? You look great. Okay. See? How are you? You in any pain? Yeah. Okay. Well, that Watch your step here. Okay. You got me? I got you. And action. Hey guys, welcome back to another episode of Dillinger Daniels Raw. That's right, guys. So where we left off last time. Hold up. Hold on. We're gonna start off with the lights. Let me start talking. Alright, let's do it again. Action. Hey guys, and welcome back to our channel. I am Sandy, a better known as Lisa, and this is Tony Dillinger. Yes. So, what are we going to talk about today? So, we're going to go on, and we actually played a few of the episodes where, um, or the clips, I should say, of the whole procedure of going to the Columbia and getting her surgery done. So, originally, we came to Columbia on March. I think twelve. Twelve. Mm -hmm. And. The whole coronavirus thing was not that bad yet. It was getting there. You was talk about it, but it wasn't where it is today. And today is actually what's the date today? April. April. No, no, May. May, May 9th. Night. May 9th. Yes. So today's. And we're still in Columbia. And we're still in Columbia. <laughs> yeah, we'll get to that story later. <laughs> but basically, we came for her surgery, which she looks amazing. I was supposed to get surgery. I was getting lipo myself. I was getting lipo, and. Um, we were coming down and we had the recovery thing booked and everything was good and, and I talked to her before we left and I said, honey, should we do this? And she said, yeah, we'll be fine. No big deal. But something inside me told me to start taking pictures of all my bills and anything I had to pay, just take a picture of it. And I told her, she was like, no, I have everything covered. I said, okay, no problem. So I took pictures of it, did everything, not knowing that it was going to come in handy later on. You know, phone number, all those little things that you need, you know, during the time of a month where you have to pay things or call people or whatever it is, I took a picture of my calendar on my desk, boom, boom, boom. So anyways, time goes on and we end up, we take the risk of coming down and she says, I'm always like, it's okay. We'll be fine. Yeah, so, <laughs> I'm like, let's just go with the flow yeah, so, type of girl. Exactly. So. <laughs> exactly. But, but you know what? It's been one hell of an adventure. We'll get to that later. But we come down and we have a great flight. We, we get first class, right? Yeah, we fly without Bianca, business. but anyway, moving on. And so we get down and uh, we fly down. It's a wonderful flight, very comfortable, about seven hours. We get to Cali, no, no, Bogota, right? Yeah. Bogota, you have to fly into Bogota, the capital, and then from Bogota, you go to Cali. So from there, we go down, wonderful flight. They pick us up in a little taxi. I'm talking about a little taxi, a small little mini taxi. And I'm like, how the hell are we going to get in this thing? But because, every you know, like, car here is very small. Very here. small. We're, from, we're from LA, by the way. So in LA, everyone's driving big cars. I mean, everything's big, 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 big. Yeah. big. Even the cars are big, you know. Um, so we're used to that. So they put us in this. They can't even fit us our luggage in there. We put our, one of our luggage in the front seat, like hanging out of the window, basically. You and we're barely... sitting on top of our suitcase. <laughs> Just kidding. <laughs> yeah. And you can barely shift the car. He actually has to move the back to shift the car. It was a stick shift. It's pretty funny. You feel every bump. Oh yeah, I'll there's a, a suspension that doesn't exist in Colombia. Like it's just you're like bump, 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 bump. Every bump and it's pretty. Uh, and all the seatbelts work when you go in the taxi, so it's pretty. Uh, you know, you have to get used to that. But that's, that's life in Colombia. You know, it's just the way it is. Anyways, let's move forward. Uh, basically, um, so we go from there. We get picked up by the taxi, and then. And then we show up to the recovery house, which we'll talk about the recovery house a lot more in detail, right? Yes. Or are we doing that right now? Well, we'll we'll get to that. Yeah, actually, okay. let's talk right about now. Right now, we're talking about our surgery. We're gonna yeah, let's talk. We're going from the beginning. Okay, okay. The recovery house. I did speak about it a little bit um before. I think I was just in um still at, with anesthesia, and so I don't know what the hell I was talking about. I know a couple of times you told me stop talking, cut it out, and I was like. I was just blabbing and blabbing and blabbing. So I just wanted to get the moment so I didn't forget. Like I was living the moment because, you know, now I'll probably forget certain details. And I didn't want to forget that. Yeah. So I think you will show a couple clips later of me blabbing, but I was very detailed on everything. Um, okay. No, no, you, you yeah, yeah, so absolutely. So the recovery house was great. They were very welcoming. Um, do I give the name of the recovery house now? Or sure, sure, sure. The sure. Next clip? 
Uh, we can share it now. I think if you share it now, because they're going to see it by now, they're going to see all, all the videos before. The recovery house, um, the name is VIP Recovery. Now, there is another uh, VIP Recovery, I think. Um, so don't get confused. There's another one called Recovery VIP. I think they just switched the words around. So don't get confused. Um, this one, ours is VIP Recovery. And our doctor, which we'll share the doctor in a whole different clip. We're not going to share the clip from the name in this clip, okay? But um, it's owned by our doctor. The nurses were great. The meds were great. Um, it wasn't a packed house. Usually they have 10 girls in there. So you might want to think about it if you're not that type of girl that wants to stay in a house with a lot of girls. Because uh, not only will there be like 10 girls, but the girls will bring people. That's another thing I want to talk about too. Remind me, or maybe I'll talk about it now. Um, I've heard some girls also mention that when they come to Colombia, they rather come alone because they don't want to feel like they have to uh, entertain somebody else. Um, in my case, I think it's so different because I would have been stuck here in Colombia alone. So it's, I think it's fabulous that I came with somebody. Um, and also, I, I, if you do, I really would bring anybody. I would have brought my mom. I would have brought my sister. I would have brought anybody. I don't. I wouldn't want to be here alone. Uh, even if the coronavirus wasn't uh, happening, just because, but wait, first of all, you have to bring somebody you're really comfortable with, somebody you're comfortable with that you don't have to entertain. Because if, let's say, when I, if I, for, with him, he came with me, and I was like, if I was in pain or not feeling well, I was able to tell him, hey, can you call them and ask them to bring me this? Or can you call, you know what I mean? Because sometimes I wasn't well enough to do or ask or push a button to get a nurse up there. Like I wasn't well enough, you know? And um, or if I wanted to certain something, he was able to go out and get it from me. You know what I mean? So um, I would suggest to bring somebody that you're comfortable with, that you do not have to entertain. And that you're totally comfortable because, I mean, you will go through the horrible, disgusting experiences. Blood gushing everywhere, grease coming out of your body. Yeah, it's pretty um, brutal. It's pretty you brutal. are definitely constipated because they give you... Um, pills, you know, from for the pain, and um, you're constipated. I mean, those are like things that are very personal and could be very uncomfortable. So definitely bring somebody that you're super comfortable with. Um, so yeah, so that's what I want to say. So if you do, if you want to come alone, come alone. It's up to you. But mm -hmm. I would. I've heard girls say, "Oh, what? Don't bring nobody. You'll be fine." I would bring somebody. Mm -hmm. Like just comfortable. Go ahead. Yeah. So yeah, so bring in somebody, yeah. So obviously you know you have to bring, bring somebody. somebody. <laughs> <laughs> so, so basically, um, what my opinion is, see, I was actually gonna have surgery too. So we were gonna be suffering together. Um, you know, I'm gonna be totally honest here since we're doing this thing, might as well be honest. Um, so my situation, I was kind of disappointed. I didn't get my surgery, as you can tell, I'm still fat. So basically, um, I got my blood work done in LA and got all my AKG, all my AKG, right? Yeah. AKG, the heart stuff, everything. And they said, my, my doctor said it was a little high. It was a little high and that, you know, to, um, you know, get off the juice. I uh, was, I do, like many guys do, I'm on the sauce, the juice. If you guys don't know what that is, look it up. Mm -hmm. But, um, So it's good for you guys, the guys that are doing mm -hmm. that, um, to pay attention to this video. Yeah, if you're too, looking to get lipo yes. or uh, surgery, it, it's it's gonna throw your levels off. Your cholesterol, mm -hmm. your heart rate, I mean, everything goes off. Your high blood uh, blood count, red blood count, I mean, everything's all fucking whacked. So, um, you know, and I was throwing in a lot of stacking, all kinds of shit. So, anyways, um, did that. So he said, you know, you can have surgery, you know, but you need to eventually get off the shit, but uh, you're good to go, he signed up. All right, excellent. So then send the paperwork to Columbia and they tell me, okay, you're fine. So I'm like, okay, fuck yeah, let's do this. So uh, we come down and right away from the, from the taxi, they're like, hey, we're gonna take your bags, drop you off, we're gonna go with somebody else, we're gonna take you to your blood work, right off the plane, okay? So, I mean, it's a long, long day. From the moment we get off the plane, boom, straight to the, to the uh, blood work, I believe, right? And those needles are big, guys. <laughs> yeah, they're not like the little ones back at the if, states. If I have surgery here again, oh I'm my gosh, definitely gonna bring my own needles. And, okay. and, and I'm not scared of needles. Well, you know, I don't like them, but you know, of, of doing the sauce, you get accustomed to the needles. But I get uh, what do I use? Thirty gauge, I think thirty gauge, one inch, 
the, this one is like it's a big gauge and they're putting in the needle and i mean your vein so yeah. they're drawing blood so I it's screamed, a, and he it's, not just scream i went wow <laughs> and a, he came from the waiting room so like, what's going on <laughs> i was like yeah she stuck me with a needle <laughs> but, but you let me tell you something about the location where it's at these people will get really nervous when it comes to people drawing blood in other countries and everything but let me tell you something the facilities are very clean very professional everyone is i mean um they're, they're, they're everywhere. So they take us down this block, and it's like, I kid you not, uh, you can get a colonoscopy, you can get uh, x-rays, you can get, um, I mean, just everything, a whole block, a facelift, a this lift, a that lift, you can get a dick implant, a, a, everything you want. And, and one street, and then you have the Lote guy, or I don't have a look this year. I mean, they have the, the what's the, what's the, 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 fruit, the fruit, the fruit. Like fruit. Yeah. yeah, so they have the fruit guy selling right there in front of the doctor's office. And <laughs> so it's a little different. You don't buy that shit in Beverly Hills. Yeah, you don't see that in Beverly Hills. So you have the fruit guy right there, you know, the vendors selling stuff in the street. And then you have like, you know, a surgery center right there. So it's kind of interesting. But we go we get our blood work done and everything seems to be fine. And then from there, what do we do after that? They took us somewhere else. Remember, it was like two to runs. Try on Bajas. Oh, they're trying to Fajas. We go to a Fajas store. And then you get uh, do paperwork. The paperwork is basically. It was insurance. Like paperwork. kind of the insurance, like if something goes you wrong. They, they make you. They help you get insurance. That's the good part. So yeah. they do help you get insurance. I think it covers like what twenty five. Yeah, so twenty five thousand. I think if you know, something happens wrong with your surgery or, or mm -hmm. when you go back home, you end up in the ER due to your surgery. Um, there's an insurance that covers. This insurance that covers, but the only way you get paid from that money, just a little side note, you have to have a Colombian bank account or know someone that's uh, Colombian yeah. in order to get that money if something does happen yeah. with your surgery. They don't tell you that. So you, I haven't heard that in any videos either. Have you? No, but I, I asked. I'm like, yeah. How the hell am I gonna get this money? You guys send it to me. To, yeah. To like, yeah. No, they're like Chase well, or Wells Fargo. I, you know, so a lot of people are not gonna have Colombian bank accounts. No. Luckily for okay. us, she is a, a dual citizenship. Yeah. She's Colombian. Mm -hmm. um, and of course, her dad is just family out here that would. Yeah. Well, she's very lucky. She'd be able to, to get by. I but, wouldn't be here if I wasn't Colombian because I, I would be those girls that, um, or that person that would be scared to leave the country. Mm -hmm. um, but I always tell him, like, well, if I lived in Colombia, if I never went to the States, um, I would be having surgery here. So what's the big deal? Let's it's do this. It's very safe. You know, I'm very big on, on security and, and safety. Um, you know, I'm always constantly, you know, have my little secret pouches, my, 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 my uh, pouch right here. And I have my bags held and I have my money, uh, um, you know, discreetly placed and strategically placed in case we do get robbed, you know, they take the small amounts or whatever it is. I have split all the money up and hide it all and, um, constantly watching, constantly watching. I, I don't even get to relax because I'm, I'm like paranoid, but, um, but here I didn't have that feeling. I really didn't. I felt very safe. I never felt like anybody. Um, I was in danger or anything. Um, I feel more in danger when I go to Mexico, unfortunately. You know, we go to the resort area, and I feel more in danger in Mexico than here. Here, there's all the security guards, there's security guards at every pharmacy, doctor's office, and they all carry guns. Everyone's armed here. It's crazy. Everyone's armed, shotguns, bulletproof vests. You feel very, very secure, very safe. Um, security guards are, are a big thing here. They have a lot of security guards, and, and, uh, uh, and the nurses that would take us, you know, they, they do this all day long, so they know where to go, they tell us where to go, and, you know, it's pretty um, it's pretty nice. simple. So, going back, so um, there's usually about 10 girls that check into recovery houses here in Colombia. I mean, when these doctors are busy, they're used doing like about two to three surgeries a day. Uh, but luckily, because of this um, coronavirus, uh, there was only three girls. Um, one of them showed up with her mom and then another one and then us um so two americans one Canadian, and it was nice because it was just we had the house to ourselves and we were all like like helping each other you know um like if the mom would go and get food she would offer if we order like colombian food and bananas and stuff, stuff like that we would offer too so we were all like really well like a team you know uh, we, we didn't have any problems with the girls um, one of me, the other girl that was having surgery the same day, um, we prayed, uh, all three of us, right? We, we prayed and it was just like, we just kind of like helped each other. So it was really nice because we were all going through the same thing in the same boat. No cattiness, mm -hmm. no bitchiness. And I mean, I'm sure you have those bitches that show up too. You yeah, know? so but that's what I'm saying. If you are that type of person that maybe doesn't want to, I don't know if I could deal with 10. I wasn't even thinking. I didn't think they were 
That would have been hard. That would have been definitely hard because the house mm. would have been really small then. You know, um, I think three to five girls is plenty. But when you start putting 10 girls in a house like that, I mean, the house was big too. Then it might get a little crowded and it might be Because you put wear and tear on the on the nurses too. Because yeah. You make them grouchy and then they have to go to the next girl and they kind of take it on the next girl and you can feel that negative energy. Absolutely. Um, definitely. But so, let me tell you something real fast. The house was great. I mean, it's a big house. I mean, cool. it's... Um, I want to say honestly, there's probably about ten bedrooms. Like I think ten there bedrooms. Was. Ten bedrooms, yeah. upstairs, downstairs. Mm -hmm. um, they have a swimming pool, like your own swimming pool that's blocked off in this. I don't even know what you call it, but it's like there's buildings around oh, it's it. It's like a backyard. It's like it's a back. No, it's a backyard, but yeah. it's like I don't know. There's a way you call it, um, but it's like it's like tall buildings, and it's like its own little pool in the back right there. So that was cool. I do my workout every day. I, I swim. Um, do my laps. We have there. videos of that too. Yeah, yeah, it was really, really cool. And then, um, what else? What else? Um, the house is very clean. We got uh, the, the rooms with the two beds, and they had reclinable beds. Now our own bathroom. That's the nice thing about it. If you have surgery, they offer that um, those uh, recliner beds with a remote. The part that sucked is like when we first got there, I was like, I'm ready for the recliner bed. Give me the remote. And they don't give you the remote. People so you're sleeping shit. on a flat bed for until your surgery day. Yeah. But I was like, no, they're real, like they're holding on to that for your life. I'm like, give me the damn remote. Yeah, it's like it's kind of <laughs> fucked up because you pay for it. Yeah. It's like shit. You they know? don't give them to you. Well, not our, our, our recovery house. They don't give it to you until the day of your surgery. Mm -hmm. Um, but anyway, so if you are, oh, let me finish that part. If you are the type of girl that might go crazy with 10 other girls in the house, because they take no, they also might bring a guest. Um, then I would definitely recommend an Airbnb. They do have nurses that they offer to come and see you at your at your a Airbnb as well. So, go ahead. Yeah, that's, that's you know, the house um, was amazing. Um, beautiful house. Beautiful facility, very clean, uh, very secure too. The gates, are big old gates, and you have to bus bus to get in. They have security cameras all around, um, so they're constant. And there's Wi-Fi. The Wi-Fi in Colombia is not the best I've seen, uh, even in our Airbnb and the recovery house. It would go in and out. I would have to reboot it once in a while. It was not the best, but um, you know, it we it got us by. It got us by. Um, the good thing was we had a nice bathroom. The bathroom was nice. You had your own shower. Um, there was hot water, um, never no issues with that. Um, let's go into the food, the food, the food. Go ahead. The food, I, I, mean, I like the food. I'm, just, I'm, I'm fine. They do try to feed you healthy, which is great. You know, like um, just like a little bit of salad and the rice and protein. And, you know, they do try to keep your balance. Juices, they're really big on juices. And they're just really good with their food on what you eat. Um, like they give you all their nutrition throughout the day that you possibly need to get your strength back. They give you soups, like lentil soups, or green soups. Very hearty soups. Yeah, like they just give you all, all kinds fresh of, to get your body recovering from the surgery. Nothing from the can, like at home. No, not like how I would do it. <laughs> yeah, but it, it, it was, it was um, that's another thing. Let me rewind a little bit. Yeah. When we went to the, um, keep track of that clock. Make sure that thing's still ticking. Okay, I, I can't see. Ticking. Yeah, I can I see it. Like so it. basically, uh, when we got our blood work, um, we were so tired from the, the flight and everything that uh, she finally went to the one of the nurses and said, well, can we get something to eat? We're hungry. Mm -hmm. And they're like, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Finally, they took us back to the house and they fed us. And it was a home-cooked meal, very healthy, but very small portion. For oh, me, yeah. it was not enough. <laughs> and so they, I didn't want to say nothing. You no, know, they first, served him as much as they served me. <laughs> they're saying they're giving me the same amount as a, as a female. Like little That's tiny it. thing like this, a little thing right. And I was like, Oh my God, I'm gonna starve here. And so I didn't know anything about if I could order food. Or, I mean, what kind of access I had. No one explained anything to me. That's why it's pretty good. So I, I had to tell Michael, por favor, dale un poquito más comida al muchacho que está más grande que yo. <laughs> so basically, she said, be more you know, bigger than me. So, Please. So, you know, so it was like one of those things that I was starving. And, and thank God she said it. And you know, the thing about it is they feed the girls because Colombian people, they don't eat like us, okay? Americans. With their burritos, like they have Mexican restaurants here, their burritos are this big, okay? And you know anybody that's from LA or anywhere else in Mexican food, when we want a big burrito, it's like this. I mean, that's the size of our burritos that we're, we, we expect, right? The La Gigante or the, or the, the Panzón or whatever they call it. So, um, you know, it's it's stuff like that, but here, very, very small. So that's one thing that, that you should bring to their attention. If you're a big eater, you need more calories, then you should say that. Or if you bring a guest, then... 
um, you know, make you can speak up and say something about I, that. I, at night time, oh, here's the thing, because I have the anesthesia. Um, I told you guys before, I didn't have the epidural. Um, all those girls that had epidural were perfect. Me, I was so messed up because I had the regular anesthesia. They totally knocked me down, knocked me out because I have my back fused. So anyway, so I wouldn't, my appetite wasn't that big. Like they served me big breakfast. I was like, okay, I ate a little bit. They served me lunch, little bit. Dinner, little bit. So I would get hungry at the end of the night because I didn't eat all those meals. I only ate a little bit. And so I would say, tengo hambre. <laughs> and they would be like, there's no more food. I'm like, I need, like, do you have any cookies then? Or anything? I'm nothing. So hungry. And they were like, no, we don't have anything sweet. No, nothing. So the only thing they would give me was um, apples with um, cream. Whipped uh, cream. Whipped cream. Whipped cream. And that was, that was good. I was like, I'll take it. I'll but you know, it. for anybody that's from the United States, we're used to getting up, you know, going to Del Taco, going to Jack in the Box. You know, Having a midnight the, snack. Yeah, going to tacos. Like, you know, those two tacos for 99 cents, you know, or whatever <laughs> whatever it is you like to get. Not no more. Yeah, no, oh, yeah, there's no 24-hour places here, guys. Yeah. Forget about that. Everything shuts down maybe 10 o'clock latest. Mm -hmm. That's it. Um, okay, let's go into my video when I came back from surgery. Should we oh, yeah. go with that? Yeah, yeah, let's go into that. We're going to jump back to the recovery house. Is there well, something else? Uh, recovery house? Um, I just want to make a point of saying that uh, very, very, very important. I'm going to say it's quite Wait, hold important. on. I'm sorry. I, did you finish talking about um, when the doctor said, no, you can't have surgery? Oh, I didn't go. Yeah, let's go back to that, guys. Yeah. I apologize. That's very important. So, this, okay, so um, the doctor said I can get the surgery in the States. The doctor in Colombia said, yeah, you can get it. And then, um, so when I get to Colombia, uh, they do my blood work and they say that, oh, you know, my red blood count's too high and too much creatine is too high and something else is too high. Um, and so I said, well, you know, you guys told me, I already showed you that I knew this already. So you guys said I can come here. So why did I go buy all these pajamas and, and pay for my plane ticket and buy this and buy that, I, you know, buy all this stuff I needed if, if I couldn't do the surgery? So, oh, well, well, you know, I just wanted to, you know, to double check, you know, we want to get you an AKG, we're going to have you see a heart specialist to see if he's okay. I said, okay, fine. So, um, they sent me with the heart specialist and he says, okay, um, let's, you know, I tell him, listen, I've been using, you know, what I told you guys, the anabolics. And I explained that to him. They don't really know what I'm talking about. So, I have to try to explain, you know, what those are. You know, these people here, are, it's not really big over here like it is in the States. So I explained that he, I think he understands. And then from there, he does my test. And I asked him, am I okay? He said, oh yeah, you're okay. You're okay, yeah. Oh yeah, no problem, no problem. So I said, okay, great, no problem. So he goes, talks to the doctor. He stays there for about 10 minutes. Comes out and they come out and say, oh, we want you to do one more blood test and drink 10 liters of water. What was it, 20 liters? I, okay. some, a bunch of liters of water. They want me to drink a shitload of water and then go back for another blood test tomorrow and then see what the results are. So I said, okay, fine, I'll do it. But I asked the doctor one last time. What are my chances of getting this done? He said, oh, we've done people with high you know, counts like that. Yeah, it's not a big deal. We just want to double check to be safe. Hemoglobin. Hemoglobin. Yeah, there you hemoglobin. go. Hemoglobin. Um, hemoglobin was too high. So, you know, there were, so at that day, they just, the, 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 the doctor called and said, okay, the, the uh, hospitals are closing tomorrow. So everybody in this house has to have surgery today. So we were like, oh my gosh, everybody was like going crazy because my surgery was the next day. Her surgery was first and then mine was supposed to be the next day. Yeah, and, and it was just a mess. So all the girls, well, the girls that were there were like, oh my gosh, let's have surgery today. So we go and they're like rushing. The doctor didn't even finish surgery till like 1 or 2 a.m. in the morning. But anyway, um, so they get me, they're like, let's go, let's go. So I go into the hospital and I'm, I'm and I know he's waiting for like, if there, he was still like, yay yeah, or nay. We weren't sure if he was going to have well, surgery. Well, what they, what they did was... They told me, they said, I'm sorry, no, they told me, they said, listen, so be ready uh, for surgery. And, and so you got to get ready. Don't eat nothing. And, and you, if they call you, you got to be ready. Okay, ready to go. So I couldn't go with her. They took her and they told me to be ready. And um, so I, I, you know, you know how you prepare yourself mentally for the next day? Well, I was starting to rush and prepare myself for that in the next couple hours. So I waited in the room. They took her. She was done in the morning. And then I would just waited, 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 waited. And then time went on for hours, and I'm like, my stomach's rolling. Like, oh my gosh, I can't believe I'm doing this. I can't believe I'm doing this. And then continue from there. So um, I was, I went to the doctors. First of all, they did, um, you know, they changed me. The doctor came, put me in a little room, took pictures front, side, back, all this stuff right before surgery. Um, and then I went to a little room that only fits four people, four girls. So it was like one girl here, one girl here, and across from us, there was two more chairs, just the same. 
they gave me um, an IV and then they gave me some antibiotics. I was allergic to the antibiotic shot that they gave me through the IV, which I was like, and all of a sudden I was just chilling. I, was, I didn't know what was going on. I was just sitting there chilling with my IV. All of a sudden I feel this extreme itch, like a allergic reaction, like internal. Um, like it felt like, and I saved the bottle. I gave told you that I need that bottle because I've never known myself to be allergic to anything. And I'm 42 years old. So I was like surprised. So anyway, so extreme itching where it was like my neck, my head, my arms, like I, even my private part, like there was people like around like the corner and I would never do that. But I had to, I grab my private part, like, oh my God. Like I just, it was so intense and it kicked me. And then when I started to calm down, I was pissed. I was like, what the, you know, I've never experienced that. So I told the person, I called them, I said, what did you just give me? Why wouldn't you tell me that this is something that could happen? But they were like, um, to be prepared, this could happen. They're like, oh, we didn't know you must be allergic to it because that doesn't happen unless you're allergic. So I was like, okay, well, there you go. So that was the beginning. The girls were coming in there. I was talking to them. One of them was there to remove her um, poly polymers, the little shots that you get in your butt. Um, she was there to remove those because she was getting discoloration. Another lady had the same thing. It was just, you just you know, everybody's so nervous, you just talk about it. Then all of a sudden, um, the nurse comes and gets me, and he's like, oh, no, no, no. I see my doctor, and I say, you know, what, is Tony going to get a surgery today? What time? He's like, no, I can't do it with him. And I was like, and I started walking me to the surgery room, and I was like, what? So um, I got to go back to my locker because I, I was like rushing to call him and tell him that, you know, that it wasn't going to happen because I know the feeling we've been preparing for months, you know, and it's such a like mentally and physically and everything you prepare that it's such a disappointment, you know, and it breaks your heart because you prepare so much for this. So my heart sunk in my stomach and I'm walking through surgery. I ran, I was crying, I was even crying because I, they thought I was crying because I was scared, but that scared us out the window because I, I felt like how he would feel. So you called me? So I went to the back to my locker, but I didn't like it. <laughs> so they opened the key and I called him. I go, listen, do not go to the surgery. You need to call. So the, I don't want to say. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Can I okay. say? No, I'll get into it. Okay. I need you to call so-and-so so you can have something else done, you know, because I didn't want him to miss out. I didn't want him to go home without having anything done. So she calls me and by then, um, trying to remember what happened okay by then i've been waiting for hours now and the thing is i hear people downstairs in the house but no one has the balls to come up or the decency and they're probably going to see this but you know maybe you guys can fix this problem the decency to tell me hey guess what you're not going to have surgery today you don't have you could eat something so it's been hours i haven't eaten nothing and i'm just waiting there waiting there waiting there. i'm like gosh okay i just gotta wait they haven't come i know these people are you know they're professional they're going to tell me no one tells me anything not until she calls me and then um, I actually knew before because I had to call them and I was like, hey, what's going on? It's been hours. Am I having a surgery or not? Like, oh, oh, uh, no, he can't do it. Your levels are too high. I go, well, oh. okay, was well, anybody going to come up here and tell me? I've been like, it's already been for hours. I was already like maybe four o'clock maybe. And I've been starving myself since the morning. So I'm like, you know, what the hell? And so when she called me, you know, I was kind of pissed off already. And, you know, she was like, yeah, you yeah, know, just, just go and, and, and uh, you want to go see the dentist. So go see the dentist now. So I was like, oh, fuck the dentist. I don't want to go see no dentist now. I don't want to do shit. I want to get the hell out of here. You know? So then from there, so then from there, she she she's like, I gotta go, I gotta go. I said, okay, good luck. And so she hangs up and then He's all pissed off at me. Good luck. I was pissed off. I was pretty pissed off because you know it's just like a fucked up feeling. You no, know? but because, I, it was because, fucked up for me too, feeling like no, it was more fucked up for me. No, I get it. Jeez. Yeah, but I felt bad going into surgery, like, oh my god, he can't get it. Well, anyways. We get the point, but you know, the thing is that the fucked up part was that why didn't anybody tell me this before I even came and prepared myself? I went through all this mental stress and, yeah. and, and I, I don't even like to use the word anxiety, but you know, mental, you know, whatever, I guess you can call it stress, but just going through all this shit and then buying all this stuff, you know, all the stuff they told us to prepare. Oh, you gotta buy this and this and this and then buying all the shit. And, and you know, when you could have just told me, Hey, your blood's too high. You're not going to happen. Don't even bother coming, you know, but no one said nothing. They like, Maybe put my deposit down and, you know, got myself all hyped up for this. Anyways, long story short. So she goes in the surgery. I go. I'm pissed off. Um, I go and I have a friend that, uh, two friends that actually came to get their teeth done. Um, and so I said, you know what? Fuck it. I'm going to go and get brand new teeth. I'm going to go get veneers done. So I call the dentist and say, hey, listen, man. 
Um, he said, send me a picture of your teeth. I sent him a picture of my teeth. And of course, you know, they do the like, oh, well, you know, uh, they try to make it seem like it's, you know. So I'm, I'm, I'm kind of thinking like, yeah, he can't do it. But he's like, no, I, I, I can fix your teeth. I can, I can fix your teeth. I said, oh, really? He said, I'll pick you up tomorrow, 10 a.m. I'm like, oh, no way, that fast? I was like, great, let's do this. So uh, he, I schedule it just like that to come get me at 10 a.m. And um, that's where we left off right there. So let's go back to the part where now she's in surgery. She's there for Wait, a long let me, time. Let me explain the surgery procedure because mm -hmm. right. I don't see any videos like this either. Um, or maybe there is. Oh, mm -hmm. yeah, there is actually. So they come pick me up. I'm back from the locker room calling him. Go call somebody. Anyway, so I, they walk me into a room. They have me like facing a little corner. And I kind of walked in there with my head down because I didn't want to panic by seeing needles or anything crazy. And they really didn't have anything out. So I was like, okay, cool. Um, so they make me face well, they give the sponges that you wash the car. Okay, so those brown ones. So they had something like that. They dunk it in, in a in a um a, like a bowl and then they just dunked it in there, squeezed it, and but cleaned my body. It was like a solution to clean my body. So they had me just standing like this, sorry. And I'm um, just rubbing down, washing my arms, like carefully under my armpits. My hair was up already. Um, and my legs, my feet, everything, like totally sanitized me, the front, the back, everything. And then they walked me to the table and he was holding my hands because he didn't want me to touch any part of my body, my, like, you know, my nose, my face, anything. So he just held me and he, he put my, and so he, he lay like this. So he had my, um, he was holding my arms to make sure I did not touch myself at all. So I, I'm thinking, God, maybe people, they wash people down and they probably do touch themselves by accident. Anyway, so they put my arms across like this. Um, they tied my arms. I'm just like breathing. And I can see there was a person that washed me, another guy, and a girl. I think the girl was the person that does the anesthesia. And um, I don't know what the other guy did. Maybe, I'm not sure. But anyway. And um, they were just talking to me like, oh, you're Colombian. Is that? And I'm like, yeah, yeah. And um, just staring at the ceiling. And I don't even remember. I just went out. Um, but I was kind of scared. I was thinking about the girls that do get the epidural. I wonder if they say, okay, guys, don't move. You know, we sit there like that and they put the epidural. Um, because a lot of them that I asked, they all said, oh, I don't even remember them doing that to me. And I'm like, how do you not remember that? Like, I don't know. I was really scared about that. But they didn't do that on me. They just completely knocked me out. Um, I did wake, I mean, I, I never woke up. I, when I woke up, I don't even, I remember I was already out of the hospital going into the taxi. I don't even remember waking me up. I don't remember. Did I have my Baja on already? I don't remember. Well, I don't remember. I, I'm sure I had my Baja on. I don't remember nothing. I remember them pushing me out of the, the, the hospital, like, get out of here, girl, and putting me in a taxi. Um, I was just very sick. Very, very sick, nauseous. Like, usually um, in the States, when you have surgery and they give you um, anesthesia, um, you stay there until you, you can wake up on your own and you can walk on your own and you know over here I couldn't even move or walk but they were they kicked me out they kicked me out of the hospital like next you know um so so basically she comes home from this point on I'm yeah. waiting there I'm pissed off still and um I it's been hours it's now it's nighttime it's already nighttime I think it's about maybe eight or nine o'clock at night so I thought it was daytime She's been there the whole day, like a long time. Mm -hmm. So she comes in and I see the taxi and I kind of just not sure what to react, what the reaction would be. Actually, there's a girl that came before her. So the girl that went in the morning to get her surgery, she's home already. I seen her and she seems pretty good. She's talking to me. She's, you know, she tells me, oh, you know, I'm a little sore, but I'm okay. She's watching TV. We're having a conversation, old deal. Everything's fine. So I figure she's going to come home the same way, talking to me, walking around and everything's fine. No, oh my gosh. So she comes in the door, I see the taxi, and she's walking in, shuffling. And as soon as I talk to her, I say, hey, hey, you look great, how you doing? No, 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 whatever I say, I don't even remember what I said, but when she talks, she kind of acknowledges me. It's like, okay, she acknowledges she's gonna be fine. And then I see her walk in, and as soon as she goes in the door, everything just goes boom, we straight down. It? We're gonna show it. So as soon as she gets there, she can't even get down the stairs. There's a lot of stairs in this house, by the way. There's little stairs, big stairs, and then there's stairs all the way to the bedroom. So there's a lot of stairs. And as you will see in this next video, um, you'll see exactly what went down.
Let's go ahead and play it. Hey, baby. How you doing? Huh? You look great. Okay. Okay. Uh, okay. Uh, you in any pain? Yeah. Okay. Your step here, okay. I got you. You want to sit on the recliner here? Okay. You want to sit down? Yeah. You want to go to the bathroom in the down here? Okay, watch your head here. You gonna throw up? Okay. I got you. I got you. Smell it, smell it. Take a deep breath, breathe in here. Relax, okay? Just relax right there. You're gonna be okay. I know, just relax, just stay right there. Put your head back. There you go. I know, baby. Hang in there. Just, just relax, okay? Okay. Get your blanket, okay? Yeah, be right back. So, so the next that night was pretty chill. We finally got her, got her upstairs, put her in the bed, had the recliner, put her in there, gave her some painkillers, and um, and don't be. Did you have the pain pump yet? Oh yeah, I had it right away. They gave it to you. Mm -hmm. My Tell hand. Tell them about just, that. Just I already did a last video, but just mm -hmm. know I know it looks scary and I know it looks freaky, but if you get the epidural, it won't be that rough as my experience. But I could say this, okay? I would do surgery again. So I've heard so many people say, oh my God, it hurts so bad. And I don't, maybe the way they do surgery out here, for me, it was so different. I like, I'm still recovering. I'm still sore. And I would, I told you this so many times, huh? It wasn't as bad as mm -hmm. people made it sound to be. I, I see that from my perspective, you know, having the two, there's two other girls in there and all three of them were different. All three of them were different. And they all had different surgery, a different, I think one had J plasma, right? No, just the, the, the laser like me. I had, we oh, all had laser. 
Yeah, but there was one that oh, yeah, she FG yeah. plasma. Yeah. Right. So that's a more uh, tougher procedure right here. Yeah. Right? A lot more soreness and everything. So she had that. The other girl from Georgia had what did she have? Phaser. Did she have her butt done or no no, no butt? No. Nope. Just lipo. Yeah, just lipo. So they all had different things done. Uh, one of the things that she had extra she added to it was uh, her arms. She had her arms. I had done. most the most done. My legs, my chin, my arms, my stomach, like both the sides, the back, um, fat transferred to here, fat transferred to my lips, and the vaser. So I had the most mm -hmm. a procedure in the house. Now she was against the arms from the beginning. She was really against it. She's like, no, 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 I don't want to do the arms. I'm just I said, listen, you're never gonna get it done again. If you're here, let's just knock it out at one time. But you know, that's the way my, I'm always like that. I'm like, hey, let's fucking just do it. Let's get it all done in one shot. But she was like, ah, you know, I don't, okay, you're right, you're right. But the arms, out of the whole procedure, from my perspective, watching her, the arms were the, probably the worst part of this they whole experience. They still hurt. They're they still, still hurt. tender, like, mm -hmm. a lot. It's, it, the only thing I can describe from, from the way she describes it is that it's a really extreme, extreme soreness really extreme tricep workout and she couldn't do shit i had to put the fall house on i had to you know still do i had to do everything for her so yeah. it was it was it was not easy you I would, would get irritated like oh i gotta put this on but you're the one that made me get my surgery my arms i, I ended up being like to. i ended up being like a nurse actually you know yeah. and i was like shit i didn't come here to be a nurse <laughs> shit that's what we're paying all these ladies for you know but it, it became like a uh, the nurses come in oh yeah the nurses come in i think we talked about that already but the nurses do come in um, you know, uh, like at six in the morning, six a.m. They give you shots, give you your pills. So, and they come in constantly. They sign paper. They need more money. They need to buy you more diapers. They need to buy this. So you you don't get a lot of rest there. I mean, yeah. you really don't. And you after a while, you get very used to the nurses I think coming I'm in. Tired at six o'clock in the morning, they would come and give me my shot in my arm. One day here, next day here, one day. Here. I was like. Ah, oh, so tired of these injections. Yeah, and those needles are small, like they're small. So if, they're, if they pinch you well enough, then you don't feel. Like yeah, they, they were pretty good with the needles, and yeah. she took it like a champ. I, I was surprised because she's a big chicken when it comes to that stuff. Totally. But she did. She did very good. And every day, one thing I can give you guys uh, and girls is that it does get better every day. I know I didn't get my work Wait. done, but Wait. it did get better. I noticed a, a, a gradual, gradual every day. I'm not even lying. Every day she was. Getting up by herself, she was walking more. Well, you know what? Like in two days, she was already going downstairs by herself, eating breakfast and laughing, and, and and she was fine. She was, you know, slowly, slowly, and I have pictures every of day. me. Um, you have to wear diapers. And I have a picture of me waiting, waiting, waiting for the lady to come and give me my drain and drain and we'll show those pictures. And I was sitting there at the table eating. And I think took a picture of me, and I look a mess, like bruised, and purple, like she got red on the car. All the side, I was like, oh my. God. It's just scary to see your own body like that, you know? Yeah, it's it's pretty brutal to, for me to see that, you know? Um, but, you know, along with patience and, and uh, the will to recover, I think... think um, it, went by, it, went, it went from bad, bad, the way you just saw the video, to, like, doing being more independent mm -hmm. pretty quick, within three very, days. Yeah, very quick. She was, she was rocking and rolling It really did take fast. me time to shower by myself, though. Mm -hmm. yeah. The ladies would come and help her shower, and then eventually mm -hmm. I would help her shower. And um, it wasn't too bad. And then, um, yeah, and then the doctor would come every, what, every week, every couple of days? I don't yeah, know. Yeah, every couple of days. I think. He would come check on her. And she was healing fine. She was healing yeah. fine. And then she would go for her massages and downstairs. What is it every day? Yeah, the massages every day. Every, starting the next day. I've heard of girls saying, like, oh, the doctor just tells you to get a massage when you're, when you, when you're ready or a week later. And their body does not, um, heal well mm -hmm. from my from what i've seen so i'm like you know you gotta get in there and you gotta start doing the massages and i think right away you know don't let that like that blood fluid everything build up because a week is a long time and you hear a lot of screaming guys a lot of screaming from those rooms uh, from upstairs i could hear girls cussing and really oh yeah cussing crying screaming i was like what the heck are they doing to these girls down there and yeah it was chaos down some of the girls were more sensitive than others and you know Take it did, I, did I scream? I don't remember. I don't remember. I would hear the other girls cussing, uh, screaming, yelling. Yeah. You know, so. The first couple of days, it's very tender. Like, it feels like, you know, you just, like, very sore. Like, you have a bruise, and somebody just constantly poking at it hard, you know, at, during that, in that bruising spot. You know, it's like, oh, gosh. Like, you know, um, like, the other girls had less work than I did. And mm -hmm. I, they've said they would, they would never do it again. Like that was it. And I'm like, God, 
I, I always thought I can't take pain. Um, I always thought like I'm a big baby with even needle, but I felt like always say I would do it again. Like you I, did good. You did good. Yeah, I don't know how how. And we're much more experienced now, and that's why we hope that yeah. anybody that comes to Columbia, um, we hope that these videos can help you tremendously. And there's so much more information I'm going to share with you guys, especially so much. as being a spectator to it and uh, from her perspective of being in the surgery herself. Um, we have some great information and, and we have a great story behind all this guys. So stay tuned for the next segment. I hope you guys enjoyed this. Wait, my father. I want to show my father. This is my little father. Oh yeah. Well, no, you know what? Let's save it for the next one. All right. <laughs> so check out the next one guys. I'm going to show your body. It's banging. So stay tuned guys. Make sure you like, make sure you subscribe and um, stay tuned for more videos and we have a lot more coming. We have a lot of footage we've been filming. We just got to get it edited and uh, like I said, we're stuck in Colombia still. We're going through that whole story. It's a whole other story within itself. Stay tuned, guys, and thank you for watching. Bye. Bye.